So why don't we bring him back uh, if we've got him ready? This is again Brad Natras, U G R O Urban Grow. You know, it, it's great to have you on, man. Great for the panel, but now let's Thanks. let's dive into the company. Great. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for uh, having me back again. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to sit on the panel with some other ancillary leaders, and uh, and now I have the opportunity to tell uh, to tell everyone a little bit more about Urban Grow. Well, enjoy yourself, man. As a whole. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you for joining uh, today. I'm Bradley Natris. I'm the founder, chairman, and CEO of Urban Grow. We trade on the NASDAQ under the symbol UGRO. We're a horticulture company that engineers, designs, and integrates complex environmental equipment systems into controlled environment ag facilities. Uh, further, once facilities are operational, we have a managed services platform, which we brand GrowCare, that leverages our expertise and it provides our clients with a suite of service solutions that are focused on increasing crop yields, preventing downtime, downtime just really overall driving business continuity uh, for our clients. Uh, with that, I'll get started. And okay. hey, Brad, just a quick heads up. We don't have your screen up. So, so let's make sure before we get too far in that we've got you. If you, if indeed you want to share some slides. Yeah, that's right. Good call. Thank you very much. I do indeed. Uh, one second. No problem. Thanks for uh, interrupting me. No, no, all good. <laughs> all good. Okay, so I saw it come up. Let's see if we can just throw that up here. Okay, we've got it on the screen. Go for it. You got everything. All right, perfect. So uh, moving on, and I'll get started here. We're, we're based in Colorado. We're in our eighth year. We have uh, now increased employees to 51. And uh, out of those 51, about two-thirds are what we refer to as uh, experts. So professional engineers, uh, mechanical controls, agricultural, uh, plumbing engineers. Uh, we have masters of plant science, horticulturists, environmental scientists. Overall, it's a group of individuals who have a history of growing multiple crop types. And it's, it's these skills and the expertise acquired from working on over 300 controlled environment ag facilities, that's what sets us apart. It provides our competitive advantage and it, uh, it drives new clients uh, to Urban Grow and existing clients to keep expanding with Urban Grow. Uh, from a result standpoint, we're, we really have strong momentum. We finished uh, 2020 with 26 million in revenues and uh, most importantly carried a lot of, uh, of momentum into, uh, into 2021. As I reported last month in the first quarter of 21, we had revenues of 12 million, a record. Uh, we had record adjusted EBITDA of uh, half million. And so uh, in the trailing 12 month period as of today, we were at, uh, as of the end of Q1, we're at about 33 and a half million dollars. Uh, one of the important metrics that we report now, and I think it's uh, really important to keep following and look at, but at the end of Q1, we had 15.2 million in backlog. So backlog to urban growth is signed contracts with deposits in hand, but they have not been shipped, and therefore the revenue has not been recognized. The majority of our backlog ships in the next, in the following quarter or two. And uh, so therefore combined with our, our $50 million plus cash position, we're in a strong position right now to execute our strategic plan and, uh, and also execute our, our M&A plan as well. Urban Grow operates in the controlled environment ag market and we execute on opportunities in both cannabis and non-cannabis, so food focused. Uh, further defined, controlled environment ag is a segment where a facility is self-contained and it has a fully controlled environment. Urban Grow sees three types of uh, facilities in this segment two in which we operate. The first and our sweet spot today, it's indoor facilities. So a ground up build or a building warehouse retrofit. Uh, the second where we are expanding is vertical farms, so smaller footprint, but you can build straight up really as high as you'd like, as long as uh, you can control that environment. And then the third, we have engineered greenhouses. In the past, but it's just an area that we're not focused today. We're really focused on uh, indoor ag. We're also uh, really strongly focusing on increasing our involvement in ag tech. Uh, ag tech are solutions that 
use technology to enhance operational efficiencies. And it's important to us because it allows us to share these solutions with our clients and they in return can uh, increase uh, their yields and, and increase their performance. These three key deliverables, engineer, integrate, commission, that's where that drives the bulk of our business. And it's important to emphasize that the majority of our business has been in the legal cannabis market. Uh, over the last eight years, but it's given us a decisive advantage compared to others when entering the food focused segment. We've learned from working with the most value, most expensive crop in the world, and we're taking those learnings about properly controlling an environment over to the vertical farming segment where challenges seen in the last five years typically revolve around controlling that environment. So regardless of the crop being grown, we engineer and integrate controlled environment ag facilities. Uh, it uses the exact same engineering team, design team, and uh, as most all of our complex and regular equipment systems have been born in horticulture, it uses those, uh, those same solutions as well. Going a little deeper into the solution, we're much more than an engineering firm. Um, we, we offer three engineering and design service solutions uh, to our clients. And it all started with acquiring an engineering firm in 2019. So we do have the stamp construction documents, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, but we don't stop there. Cultivation space programming, it involves looking at the future performance desired in a facility, taking expansions, maybe one, maybe two, into consideration, then bringing it back into current state and making sure that facility is designed to drive the most efficient use of space possible, which of course results in the highest yield possible. ICD or integrated cultivation design, that involves designing the inner workings or the guts of the grow. And so in addition to designing benching and lighting systems, we design the flow of air in a facility, the flow of water when it enters the facility, how does it need to be treated? Maybe reverse osmosis, does the temperature need to be taken up or brought down? But more importantly, when it leaves the facility, it's now wastewater. And wastewater regulations vary by country, by city, by county. And we design that wastewater treatment system uh, according to those uh, regulations for our clients. As just talked about on the, I'm sorry, next is uh, the integrating and, the, and commissioning. Our experts are continually vetting uh, best in class environmental equipment systems and regular equipment systems from sources or manufacturers uh, around the world. I say complex because it involves the use of our engineers. It's not off the shelf. It requires dozens or hundreds of hours of specific expertise um, and design prior to the installation. And then once the installation is complete, uh, we don't stop there. We send our commissioning engineers on site. Uh, they make sure that the systems are operating to manufacturer specifications. And they also make sure that the staff of our clients is properly trained on utilizing, uh, on utilizing these equipment systems. Now talking about European uh, reach and relationships and where we operate today, uh, we grew up in the American, uh, in the North American cannabis segment, and we work with some of the most well-known MSOs in the space, uh, Organigram, Kronos, Cresco, TrueLeave. Um, they represent about half of our business in cannabis, the other half is single state operators. As new states open, licenses are awarded, and we work closely with those groups throughout the, the life of their grows and work with some of the largest single state operators in the U.S. After uh, expanding to Europe uh, last year, we continue to make solid progress in the European market. We are in the process of, an open, of opening a European office uh, later this year. Uh, in Q1, uh, we signed two commercial agent representation agreements. And that was a move made to sort of get ahead of the curve before we opened the office. And it's resulted in us working on multiple opportunities already. Uh, as I mentioned uh, on the panel, actually I'm, I'm presenting from Latin America today and uh, the world's beginning to open up for business again. And I'm making certain that, uh, that Urban Grow seizes this opportunity. Uh, we also have a team traveling over to Europe in the next week as well. Um, multiple countries working with current clients and new prospective uh, clients in the market. Finally, you know, our, our, our business, the, the equipment systems, both regular and complex, we work with some of the best equipment manufacturers in the world. And uh, utilizing David from Fluence, who was just on the panel, it's important 
because technology and equipment systems are consistently evolving and getting better. And so a company like Fluence has a team of a dozen engineers that are working on their next iteration of their fixtures ready for launch in one, two, three years out. And so uh, that's why we choose to work with uh, manufacturers and, and represent best in class. We build strong partnerships also in the European market with integrators and contractors. And our foundation is set for, uh, for a very efficient uh, launch and, and growth in countries uh, around the world. The controlled environment ag market uh, opportunities are strong, uh, as you all I'm sure know, in both cannabis and also food focused vertical farming. Uh, when you look at vertical farming versus field farming, efficiencies of 10 to as high as 50 times can be uh, realized. And that's why the market's growing. The market's uh, expected to grow just over 25% a year for the next five years to about 13 billion. Uh, the U.S. cannabis uh, segment market is expected to more than double to approximately 42 billion in the same period. And uh, the European cannabis market only about a quarter billion dollar market that's expected to, to grow to over 30 billion in the next decade. It's a tremendous uh, market opportunity in both segments. I'm going to talk a little bit now about how we are utilizing our momentum, our talent, and uh, our strong cash position to execute our growth strategy. It's built on three pillars, organic growth, acquired growth, and uh, invested growth. I'll start with uh, organic growth. It's important to note that Growing with our current clients as they expand is one of our fastest uh, and greatest growth drivers right now. But complementing this, there's five key components that will further drive uh, our organic growth. The first is uh, our sales infrastructure and building it out further, not only in North America, but, but around the world. Not only is this allowing us to capture additional demand in current markets, it's also providing us with more efficient access to new markets. We're accessing a new talents, relationships that they've built over the years, both with clients and also equally as important with uh, new vendor partners as well. Second is our, our digital marketing strategy. Our marketing plan this year revolves heavily around uh, investing in digital marketing for the purpose of lead generation and uh, results in engaging clients as early as possible, early on when they're making decisions on perhaps uh, a location or the type of facility they want. So we can help influence that efficiency from an early stage. We launched uh, an SEO and AdWords campaign across digital and social earlier this year, and uh, we're enjoying the strong results uh, of that, uh, actually not just in North America, but, but globally as well. Third is uh, expanding aggressively into the European cannabis markets. I see the European market really where the North American cannabis market was four to five years ago. There's a demand for services and expertise. Um, there's a demand for controlled environment, GMP certified, pharmaceutical grade, indoor facilities. And, uh, and that's our sweet spot. And it's really uh, helping us focus more on a turnkey a solution as well for our clients in Europe and also in, uh, in North America as well. Fourth is uh, entering food-focused vertical farming. Regardless of crop type, our engineering teams and design teams, they're crop agnostic. It's the same team. It's the same complex environmental equipment systems used in both. And finally, uh, we're really strongly focused on, on building out our, our higher, mar higher margin service offering which uh, we refer to as, as Grow Care. So Grow Care is a managed services program that leverages those experts that I talked about earlier and also the acquired expertise from the 300 facilities. We are providing a suite of important services to our clients' facilities. And through a monthly subscription program, we offer solutions that, that help them strengthen yield results, reduce downtime, and, and really just overall operational efficiency of, of their facilities. Some of the uh, services that we provide in our grow care, ongoing staff training, uh, auditing of facilities, and then providing optimization recommendations, troubleshooting and fixing operational problems, perhaps a pest outbreak where we send our plant scientists out, or a cooling issue, 
from underspecified uh, mechanical. We start there with a peer review, solve the issue, then we're a partner for the long run, that client. We remote monitor using technology and partner solutions, uh, including our investment in Adiza. And uh, the Crop Protection Program helps proactively write IPM programs. So they don't have, our clients don't experience those, those pest outbreaks uh, as they occur. The second is uh, acquired growth. And I just touched on this. There's a gap in the market. We saw it in Europe first. We're seeing it in the US. And there's a global demand for end-to-end -end solutions in the form of complete turnkey cultivation facilities that suit customized needs and that also are available at, uh, at a reasonable price point for our clients. By making just a couple of smart strategic acquisitions, we'll be able to tap into these significant revenues. And so we're targeting accretive, synergistic, service-focused acquisitions, profitable companies that complement uh, our existing business with a cascading effect. Perhaps those companies are getting involved with clients earlier than we are today. So we'll have a chance to build that relationship early and then engineer and integrate and commission those facilities as well. We're using acquisitions to enter new markets around the world and then also uh, access pre-existing customer and, and vendor partnerships uh, too. Hey, Brad, this is Patrick. We have a, just around one minute left. Um, okay, I'm, I'm perfect. Gonna you, yeah, I'm going to give <laughs> you an you. extra minute here to close this up. All right, good. I, I really I really appreciate it. Now, of course, man. We've got a lot of strong results right now. We've had, uh, for three quarters in a row, record revenues, EBITDA. In Q1, we had positive uh, income from operations of uh, about $150,000. We're just getting started uh, from a valuation standpoint. Our enterprise value is about 1.5 times trailing 12 uh, months revenue. We've got the cash position still of over $50 million. We've got backlog over 15 million, 1 million of low interest debt. Uh, we represent, in my opinion, uh, a very attractive uh, investment opportunity. And you know, please uh, feel free to reach out. I have it on the screen here. Our investor relations group, JTC, investors at urban-gro.com and uh, you can learn more set up a, a separate meeting but 2021 is uh, it will continue to be for us a fantastic uh, transformational for a year for the company and I look forward to, uh, to coming back in the future Patrick and continuing to uh, to tell uh, tell uh, the audience about our, our growth and uh, and how we're living the dream. <laughs> Brad, it'll be great to have you. I really appreciate you being here. You know, I was going to ask you a question because I, I feel like the institutional amount uh, or the amount of institutions that own the stock is a fairly sizable and enviable number, I would say. You know, it, it seems like you guys got a lot of attention on that up list and, and it seems like it's really gone well for you. Yeah, it is, you know, and uh, we're, we're enjoying that. Uh, we're delivering results. That's that's the primary. Um we will continue to deliver results as well. But it's nice to see that attention, right? We have groups that are in the company want a position for the long run. I think the fact that we have learned in cannabis, are strong in the cannabis segment, and now are taking those learnings to a very, um, an, another market food, which yeah. also equally has great momentum, that's really helping uh, separate us and, and really uh, driving new investors in as well. Well, Brad, thanks for joining us, man. You yeah, guys thank you very much. again, uh, the CEO, chairman of Urban Grow, U-G-R-O. I'm sure we'll see you again soon, man. Look forward to it. Thanks, Patrick. Have a great All day. All right. Safe travels, too.